everybody. Mark again here with a man plus. Happy Monday to all of you. Now we are tracking the tropics. We have multiple waves. We have three. Actually, we need to watch. The first one's still showing. It's coming towards us. The second one headed north. And a third one coming off the coast of Africa later is heading west as well. Plus, we have the severe weather going to the northeast for today and tomorrow, and there is tornado threats. So remember, the timestamps are in the description to help save you time. Now let's get into what we have coming. Now there is a two waves that's being looked at by National Hurricane Center, and there is going to be a third that's making a more westward push. Both of these are at 20%, making a west-northwest push. And I'm seeing not only by the models, also by the NASA satellite, that this is going to go right by Leeward Islands, just like the last one was, and head towards the southeast of the U.S., possibly get into our Gulf. We also have this tropical wave that's in the Caribbean now, going to the eastern Pacific, 70% in five days, 10% in the next 48 hours. And so far, this is going towards Mexico, maybe bringing some precipitation towards the southwest maybe the deep south or the south central it's still too far to be known we just need to keep our heads up and watch these next few waves coming through so as we look with national hurricane center in 24 hours we have the tropical wave going through the caribbean and it is going to fall through and go to the east pack while we have the next tropical wave going through the mdr in 48 hours it's going to move forward and 72 hours is going to get closer towards the leeward islands while this next tropical wave may get its way to the west as well, and there is going to be another one. They're steady coming off the coast of Africa still. And as we look for a chance for a tropical depression in 72 hours, you can see it building up by Central America, going to the East Pack, where our next wave has right for the Leeward Islands, has a chance for a tropical depression up to 60, almost 70% in five days. Now, from here on is when things always change a little, so keep this all with a grain of salt. It's still showing it will go towards Puerto Rico, the Leeward Islands, go towards the Bahamas, weaken down a little bit, and sit there for a while by the Bahamas. That's because we have a cold front coming down, and it could potentially block this like it normally does, bringing a low trough, a lot of shear. And literally, we are looking in 10 days energy could still be sitting towards the Bahamas. So it's too far to be accurate, guys, of course, but the trend has been that these waves will stall out for a while while they get hit with these cold waves. So we really need to watch these next few waves as they pass through. And when we look for our chances for favorable or unfavorable environment with the potential velocity anomaly, according to the Euro, it is picking up a strong anomaly from the 15th all the way towards the 19th not super strong, but strong enough. And then the Euro is showing that we will be in some unfavorable environment, some more dust coming off the coast of Africa. But in the beginning of October, around October 10th, we have an even stronger potential coming our way. So we definitely need to keep up on the tropics. Nothing is over yet. And the GFS sees that from the 16th all the way to the 19th or 20th, that we have a strong chance to get something in our area and potentially form up to a tropical depression, a tropical storm, maybe even a hurricane. And maybe another chance coming in later September, something smaller. But the one we need to watch for now is this first wave coming off. It will come off weak and strengthen later. Now, when we check with the Euro and see exactly what the potential placements can be for this wave in five days, going right towards the Leeward Islands, maybe even strengthening up towards a tropical storm. And you can see it just keeps heading west while we have this high pressure ridge just bringing everything to the west. But it does retract back so it can either go into our western Caribbean or Gulf or it could spin around by the Bahamas and go towards the southeast of the U.S. So there's still multiple locations where this storm can go. We still don't know yet. Let's take it five days at a time. In five days, it will be close to the Leeward Islands bringing a potential rain and wind. GFS sees this as well in five days and more likely to be around the Leeward Islands. But as you keep going, you see it's following the same path the Euro is showing that can either go towards our Gulf or it can go towards the southeast of the U.S. It all depends if that high pressure retracts back and pulls it to the north or if it expands out and pushes it to the west. So we definitely need to stay on this. So far, according to the deterministic models, which does change, it is showing that it will meet some problems in the Caribbean and weaken down. So as you follow the first wave, you can see it going right towards the Leeward Islands, while that second wave heads north straight to the Atlantic, and that third wave goes west towards the Leeward Islands, just like the first wave. 
And you can see literally a little over five days is right over the Leeward Islands weakening down while this next wave is following it also to the west. But if you keep going, you see it gets elongated and so far getting hit with a cold front and stopping it while that next wave, the third wave, goes to the same area right towards the Leeward Islands. So what we got to watch out for is this big high pressure creating this big old ridge where everything can just travel straight west right along this ridge. And if that ridge retracts back, it will head north. If it expands out, it will head further to the west. But so far in five days, according to the Euro, it will be going towards the Leeward Islands. So we definitely need to watch this because this high pressure is expanded out pretty good. And so far it makes a west-northwest push, gets hit with a cold front if this cold front comes in while that next wave goes to the west. So you know how much this changes, just make sure we watch this in every five days. So far it will be towards the Leeward Islands. And you can also see this with GFS as you have this next wave going towards the Leeward Islands in five days. It has it around the same area while that next wave goes northern and that third wave comes off heads a little west as well. But you can see also with the GFS that it shows that these cold fronts come in and it really messes up any chance for it to come into our golf. Because as we take a look at all the ensemble members, take myself out to picture so you can see. So starting in five days, not much going on. But as you keep going through, you can see most of the ensembles are taking this to the Western Caribbean, right into the Gulf of Mexico. So either it's going to go by Florida, it's going to go into the Gulf of Mexico, or it really is going to go to the Southwest, maybe somewhere towards Texas. So there's multiple locations where this storm could go. But looking right here, this is your controlled member. This is your more than likely outcome out of all these ensembles. You'll see literally in five to 10 days, it does make its way towards the Western Caribbean. But this is literally 10 days from right here, guys, showing it that it will be somewhat an upper level low moving by Central America towards the Western Caribbean. So take this with a grain of salt, even though it's a controlled member and plenty are showing the growth of it, it's still too far to be sure. But in 10 days, the control member of the GFS is showing it will build up, head north, and go into our Gulf of Mexico. Very much a strong storm. That could be a problem. Here's a closer shot. So you can see it does go right north. And this could easily go right to the west at this point, guys. This is literally over 10 days. It's 12 days away when this forms up. And this could easily get pushed to the west, southwest as well. You see how it's going west then it goes north. And most of the time when those show, either it forms up in the Bay of Campeche or it keeps going west. Even though you can see all these ensemble members showing this going right into our Gulf, it's still too far to be sure. Now you can see with the NASA satellite that the tropical wave does head towards the Leeward Islands, something very weak, while you have that next system pushing to the west. But if you notice that next system does go to the north, to the Atlantic, gets a lot of precipitation and forms in the Atlantic. While we have that third wave coming off the coast of Africa going west as well. Now it's still showing something very weak, but you can see in five days, it does move towards the Leeward Islands, does have some rotation with it, but so far it would be a group of disorganized thunderstorms, no tropical development out of it, just moving through. But once you go to seven days, it starts raising up all this precipitation around this system and it starts spinning right by the Caribbean and makes its way towards the Gulf of Mexico. And this is by the NASA satellite. So literally from eight to 10 days away, still too far to be sure guys, but it is showing it is going that way. But you can see here on our precipital water, you can see the waves a little bit better. In 72 hours with the Euro, we'll have this going towards the Leeward Islands, just like I showed you at National Hurricane Center. The second wave is going north, and that third wave is coming off a little bit stronger. And you can see as it pushes west, it does weaken according to the Euro, but all this precipitation is headed to the west. So we'll see what happens when this cold front, whether it shows itself, whether it don't hit. Usually that does change a lot. Literally in five days is all we can take it at this point. Now the GFS confirms that this precipitation will be moving as a group of disorganized thunderstorms for y'all in the Caribbean. But once it gets to the Western Caribbean and this cold front comes down, it does block it and suppress it. And that's where it could spin up, go by the Southeast and spin on a trough to the Atlantic, maybe giving something for Florida 
also for the Bahamas. Best case scenario, this would just be a lot of precipitation passing through and all this tropical moisture could bring a lot of flooding towards Florida. But GFS shows after this cold front, it continues trying to push west, northwest and get into our Gulf and bring a lot of rainfall at least for a lot of people. But then again, take this with a grain of salt. This is the GFS. Only the GFS is showing this possible formation in the Gulf. And we all know how inaccurate GFS has been all season long. Not one has formed that GFS has seen. So we bring in a third party, the Canadian. And you can see also that first wave goes towards the Leeward Islands, breaks apart, gets weak. The second one does head north. And the third one is a threat going to the west. You also can see that that cold front does come down and all that precipitation does meet up somewhere by Cuba, somewhere by the Western Caribbean. And so far getting hit with that cold front. Really don't know what happens after that. This is too far to be sure. This is literally 10 days away on this shot. So we take it five days and so far it's showing it will go through our Caribbean and stay together weak, maybe strengthening later while that next wave strengthens up and goes right towards the Leeward Islands as well. And so far with the GFS, we do have a cold front coming down from the 16th all the way to the 18th or 19th. Don't know how deep that's going yet. You see the last model wasn't as deep. So we will see, and a possible one coming later in the 20s. Now the Euro also sees his first dip of cold air coming down from the 15th all the way to the 18th and 19th, but it's not showing no other big dip coming later. So both of them are green. There is a cold front coming. It's all about timing on whether it's going to block this wave, steer this wave, or not affect it at all. Plus, we still have this bowling ball coming through. We've given problems for us here in Wisconsin. A lot of heavy rain really gave a lot of heavy rain for Chicago, and it's going to be doing tornado threats for the Northeast for today and tomorrow. These cells moving in front of this storm is going to bring potential chances for tornadoes. Not a lot of chances, but there is some chances. And on a wraparound, it's going to bring down that cool air. So you will have some warm days and some cool, crisp nights with some low dew points. It really will feel good at night. But it is going to the Northeast. And Chicago really got hit hard. Lots of areas were submerged with a lot of heavy rainfall, a lot of flooding. Even this lady felt bad because her neighbors downstairs, they live in a basement, so there's nothing they could do to help them, just totally flooded in their home. They even had a busted pipe that was over in Chicago, causing a lot of problems, even with their flooding, this added to it. But there is a chance for tornadoes today, a 2% chance, and this is all for Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Baltimore, Maryland, Washington, D.C., Arlington, Virginia, and Alexandria, Virginia. Also for tomorrow, for Tuesday, it will carry on to the New England states with another 2% chance for tornadoes. And this is affecting Boston, Massachusetts, Providence, Rhode Island, Worcester, Massachusetts, Springfield, Massachusetts, and New Haven, Connecticut. Now, according to the National Weather Service, there will be more rainfall from Wisconsin all the way into northern Michigan for the next 24 hours, even some more going towards Chicago, not a lot. And it will go out through the northeast, and it's not going to add up to a whole bunch. Your biggest threat is going to be for tornadoes. But after we go for two days towards three days, you can see this tropical moisture starts adding up for Florida, and there will be more. And you're getting a lot of precipitation in the west. So you still add up to a lot of flash flooding all around the whole country. The Euro is showing in 72 hours that it will be tropical moisture adding up for Florida. And as you keep going, the Euro is showing a lot of tropical moisture adding up for just Florida. So Florida, watch out. It could be a lot of storms coming your way and creating a lot of floods soon. But you can see as the storms go through today, you start getting some little rogue cells that starts passing through the Northeast. Not a lot of shear on those yet. But as they go further into the northeast and you get your daytime heating, then that's when you have your chances for your tornadoes. Now, it's not a big chance, but you can see like right there for Maryland, coming from Virginia towards Maryland, it starts getting a lot of shear just on that one cell. And that is a nasty little cell that's pushing through, going to Delaware, also towards southern Jersey. So there is a chance for a tornado to come out of that cell for today. Just be aware is sometime from 3 o'clock all the way to 5 o'clock when it shows it does strengthen 
and then it moves to the east by 7 and 8 o'clock. There is storms moving through for today, a little bit of sporadic, but you can see heaviest precipitation right there on that cell, chances for tornadoes, chances for large hail when you see that purple as well. So that one is something that does show a chance for a tornado. The rest of these don't have a lot of shear on them. Not a lot of shear at all. It's just that one area for today. But then for tomorrow, it's going to spin right back up for the Northeast right around 1 p.m. So here we are at 11. We're starting to get some shear on these cells as it heats up for the daytime heating for tomorrow. And you can see the color already where your biggest threats are going to be on these cells. And this one down here by New York does gain a little bit of shear on it, as well as the one by New Hampshire, Vermont, over here getting some shear on these cells as they pass by tomorrow afternoon. This is right around 1 p.m. And it holds that shear and goes high into the New England states with all that shear on those storms. So just be aware there is a chance for a tornado to pop out of that, especially for tomorrow. One o'clock really looks like a really nasty time for these cells to be passing through. So just be aware, you do have chances for tornadoes for today and tomorrow. And when we check for our holistic tracks, which is wind direction change with height, you see we have our chances for Maryland, Delaware, also going towards New York, towards Connecticut, Massachusetts. You also see a strong one right here for upstate New York. Don't last long, but all it takes is a little spin up to really ruin your day. So just be aware, there is a few strong cells coming your way today and tomorrow. But you can see as you go through today, it's going to go around by Chicago again early this morning. Then it's going to leave out while you get some more bands going around Wisconsin, northern Michigan, and you get your storms in the northeast all afternoon long. Then for tomorrow, this is going to spark right back up. So remember the time and date is right here above my head. God bless all of you today. Hope you have a very blessed Monday. Psalm. 63. O oh God, thou art my God. Early will I seek thee. My soul thirsteth for thee. My flesh longeth for thee in a dry and thirsty land where no water is. To see thy power and thy glory, so as I have seen thee in the sanctuary. Because thy love and kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise thee. Thus will I bless thee while I live. I will lift up my hands in thy name. My soul shall be satisfied as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth shall praise thee with joyful lips. When I remember thee upon my bed and meditate on thee in the night watches, because thou hast been my help, therefore in the shadow of thy wings will I rejoice. My soul followeth hard after thee, Thy right hand upholdeth me. But those that seek my soul to destroy it shall go into lower parts of the earth. They shall fall by the sword. They shall be a portion for foxes. But the king shall rejoice in God. Everyone that sweareth by him shall glory. But the mouth of them that speak lies shall be stopped. Amen. Thank you so much for visiting my channel today, guys. Hope you all have a very blessed and a great Monday out there. All glory always goes to God, our God of Jacob, our Father, Yahweh. Every day, forever. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen.